Hey, what's up coders and coders? And today we will create a Boolean pin in Blender. This tutorial is part of the beginner series I made for Unity, where we learn um, how to create a very simple Boolean game. So I, I thought it could be it would be cool to look at Blender and create a very simple 3D model with it. I'm already no expert with uh, of 3D modeling, but and that's why I think it's cool. I will show you just the workflow from creating the asset in Blender to importing it in Unity. There are tons of much better tutorial on Blender than this one. Uh, check, for instance, Blender Guru if you think it's uh, if you want to learn 3D modeling. Uh, it's really a great one. Uh, here we will just look at the basic and how to make a very simple model. Um, cool. So um, this format will be a bit different. So it, uh, um, I won't cut. So it will be a full full series. So you can see really from A to Z how to create these assets. I won't lie, it's not the first time I record the video. Um, so thank you for watching. Before we start, take a moment to like and subscribe and I see you in Blender. Cool, so uh, Blender is free. You can find it on blender.org or just type Blender in, in Google. Uh, you can find here blender.org, download the latest version. Okay, install it on your computer. And yeah, it's free. Uh, then you can open Blender and create a new general project. Cool, before we start, everyone will tell you work with a reference image. Just work with the reference image. So we can go back to our search engine and find for a Boolean pin reference image. There are plenty of them. Uh, I found this one quite nice. Uh, there are dimensions, it looks really okay. So save image as, save it to your project and let's go back to Blender. Okay, um, so here uh, we start with the default view and the default cube. So we can get rid of that poor default cube with delete and add our reference image. For that, press Shift A and add image, reference image. So here we can go and find the image which is saved. The Boolean pin here, that's our reference image. Um, the rotation faces the camera, so we want to reset that. So we can have 90 degree on the X axis, zero, degrees, zero degree on the other axis, um, and then move around. So how to move around, that's probably the first thing that everyone finds uh, a bit weird with the, with the blender is how to navigate around. So um, we can zoom in and out with the wheel, with the mouse wheel, we can pan with shift and middle mouse button like this, and we can rotate with the middle mouse button as well like this. Uh, there is something I use quite a lot in this video with this uh, transform here, which is just the view how we look at the scene. Um, so here we can face the image here like this. Uh, you can move around, flip in all direction, okay? Um, so here we want to face, so here we see this the other side, so if you click once again here, it will flip to the right size, uh, the right side. Okay, so um, now we want to add a mesh. Um, like we used in the Unity tutorial, uh, I think a cylinder is a good start. So we can press Shift A and add a new mesh, a new cylinder here. We can move the cylinder here with the move tool and make sure it is aligned in the middle here, that this point in the middle is aligned to uh, more or less the, the middle of the image. Uh, that will make our life much easier. Yeah, something like this, cool. Uh, then we can start scaling this, um, this cylinder. We can press S for scaling, but we want to scale only on the vertical axis, so we press Z and then we can scale only on the z-axis. Make sure the bottom matches the bottom of our reference image, like this. Yeah, almost there, like this. Don't worry for the top, we'll work on that a bit later on. Cool, one important thing is that we want to enable X-ray here. That it is this, this button here, or this icon here. Click on it, and then we can see through the image. Uh, that's important, I will show you why in a second. So there are different modes in Blender. Here we are in the object mode. To start editing the geometry, the different shapes and vertices, we need to move to the edit mode. We can do that by pressing tab 
or changing here the, the, the mode. So make sure you are in edit mode. And you will see if I um, uh, disable this X-ray mode, when we select our vertices like this, we select only half of them, the ones that are facing the camera. But we want to select all of them to edit this shape. So enable the X-ray, we move back to our default position, and then when we select this, now all the vertices are selected, also the ones that are behind the camera. Okay? All right. Um, now we want to start be, uh, creating the shape of this of this pulling pin. So for that, we can add edge loops. Uh, very simple, we can press Ctrl R, and we see there is one edge loop which, uh, which comes in the middle, we can then start moving it. We could add a few like this, but uh, much simpler because we are lazy and there are shortcuts for everything. We can, uh, let's go back a few steps, Ctrl Z here. So again, Ctrl R, we have one, but if we now use the mouse wheel, we can start having multiple edge loops. Okay, so yeah, we don't need that many because it's anyway a low poly model, but yeah, that's yeah, maybe that's that should be enough. Okay, then press the left mouse button and we can still move them or press escape to get back to the default position. And there we go. We have now some more vertices, more more uh, where we can create more geometry. Okay, so uh, here very simple. We want to to scale uh, actually to start creating the shape. So we select each level like this and then we can press S to scale you can zoom a bit maybe yeah let's zoom a bit like this we press S and then we can scale this to the right size that looks about right okay and we do the same for each level um, so here if you don't like or if the, if the edge loop is not positioned well you can press G and start moving it around. But we don't want to move this around like crazy like this. We just want to move this probably on the Z axis, up and down. Okay, so we can press Z. We see this vertical blue line coming in. And so we can move it somewhere else. And then again, S and scale. Easy, huh? Can we do this now for, for all levels? S, it's a, bit it's a bit repetitive, but I think it's okay. And so you see here now why it's important also to, to work with the reference image. I, it's just easy. We don't have to think too much. We just we just go scale this according to, to our to our model. Up like this. Up, we do a few more. So here it's important to have um, this edge loop on the line because we will create then the material and have this red-white bending we see on a uh, boolean pin, okay? So maybe what, what we can do here is G, we move this down a little bit here, then scale. And then we take this one, same, we move it down with G, then Z to move it really right on, on the line, and then scale it. Okay, we can here we can also add a new, a new edge loop with Control R. Yeah, here looks okay, and then we scale again. Then we scale this one. This one we move down with the G, Z, and we align on the line S. Okay, here we move the, we scale this with S, and this one as well. Yeah, here we can probably add. Uh, one more in the middle, so Control R here and scale it a little bit to have this nice geometry. It's really up to you. As I said, it's a low poly model from the, the back of the bullying lane. We won't see much detail of this, so it's really up to you how much detail you want to, to give to this to this different uh, uh, this this model. All right. So uh, now let's finish the top here. Um, we will use another shortcut. Uh, make sure you have the side view, select the top, and if we move down the camera a little bit, we can press I, which will insert new vertices like this. So we can insert vertices, we move back to the view here, now G again, Z, we move them a bit like this, and we scale 
a bit better like this. You can move them up a little bit more. Okay, like this, S. Okay, cool. Uh, and we do this few times, like I again. We add another, another uh, layer or level, whatever. Uh, G to, to grab and move with Z on the Z axis. We can move this like that. We do this one more time, maybe. I, side view, G to move, Z. Okay. And what do you think? Maybe just one more. I, we move this here. G, Z, and we, uh, we have our pulling pin. Amazing. What do you think? It's great. Okay, we can get rid, uh, we don't get rid, we just uh, hide the reference image. So, yeah, pretty nice. But it looks very, we really see all the edges and all this, it's not, not looking great. So what we can do is, from the object mode, right click, shade smooth, and voila, it looks already much better. Cool, so uh, next thing we want to do is to add the material. So far it's just a default material, this grey boring material, so we want to add new material here with material properties. We add a new one, we call it white. Uh, we can add a new one here, we call it red, okay, and we change the base color to red. Uh, we can move the small circle here to the red color, uh, it looks like, a, okay, it's one, 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 huh? so we, we put one everywhere, that's the pure red, okay. And then uh, we can go back to uh, the edit mode, and one thing we want to change we want to change the selection. So here we can select one vertex or more vertices. We can also select edges like this, one edge or an edge loop again. Or we can select faces. So we can move around this another shortcut. It's one, two, and three. So here we really want to make sure we, we select faces. Okay, let's activate our reference image again. Um, and so here we have this bending this here, we can select these faces, shift, select the second band here, and assign the red material. Awesome, we don't see anything, but that's because we are in a viewport shading here. Uh, we can move here to, yeah, that's, it's plain solid mode, and here we can see with the material. So now if you go back here, we have what looks like a great bowling pin, awesome. Okay, there are a few things we still need to do um, with this before importing to Unity. There, there is just one thing, don't ask me why, but when we import Blender models to Unity, they, they are imported with a default rotation of minus 90. So what we have to do is to correct that in Blender so the rotation in Unity is correct. So we can go here in the object properties and on the rotation X, we enter minus 90. Okay, so our pin is now on the side like this. Uh, make sure you are, you are in object mode, select your, your pin, then control A, and we apply all transforms. So everything will reset, uh, reset kind of, with a scale of one everywhere, rotation of zero, etc. Okay, cool, so we are almost there. You will see there are a few more things we need to change. So if we take that pin, we save it in our project, uh, that's my tutorial original asset in the prefabs, so we can save this directly in the prefabs. We created the folder in the, the Unity tutorial video, so we save. We can give it a name like pin. Okay, and now we can go to our project. And yeah, we can go to our Unity project and we have our pin here. So we can drag and drop into the scene, but there is some weirdness again, so we see a few things. So first, it comes with light and camera and all this, so we can get rid of, of the light. Ah, sorry. We first have to unpack the prefab so we can start editing it. So we can remove then the light, the camera, and the reference image. We can drag this out of the, the parent and delete, okay. 
But, uh, so that's what I was saying. You see the rotation here is minus 90. So now if you put zero, the pin is standing correctly. Okay, uh, but the size is not right. So it's a giant pin. It's not what we want. Okay, um, so let's delete this and go back to Blender. In Blender, we can open the small arrow here and we see a few things about the transform. We see the dimension. Our pin is actually 3, three meters dot 24. So we want our pin to be 38 centimeters. You recall from the, we have this from the reference image of 15 inches. So we want it to be 38 centimeters. So we, we could change this here to be 0 to 38, but then we have a way, a way out shape. It's not, not uh, re um, changing the dimension on the x and the z axis. So it's the y axis before because we rotated our pin 90 degrees. So uh, that's maybe a bit confusing. I hope it's not. But so, okay, let's cancel that. We just need to make a very small mathematical operation here. We know that our, uh, we, that, that our uh, pin is 38 centimeters high. So we want to divide 3.24 by 0 0.38. Actually, we can do that in Blender already. If we divide by 0 0.38, It's something like 8.53. That's great in Blender, we can do all this operation here. Like uh, There is a calculator everywhere. Okay, so let's write down this number, 8.53. Let's go back, change the size to 0 0.38. And here we can then divide by 8.53. Divide by 8.53. And that's it. Now we should have a, a green pin with the right size. Before going saving and going back to Unity, again in object mode, control A, apply all transforms, save, and if we go back to Unity, we have our pin here that we can import. We still have, still need to unpack, remove the light, the reference image, the camera, drag this out here. And voila. And we have our bowling pin and it looks like it's the same size as the others that were really 38 centimeters. Amazing. Cool, so um, now we can add the other components. So we, ha we had a rigid body and mesh collider, so we can add again the rigid body with a mass of 1.5 and collision detection to continuous. And we can add a mesh collider that is convex. So we see here that's a bit the limitation of using mesh colliders is that when it's not really convex, because here we see the shape is going back in, um, it's not working perfectly, but in our example, it's not really a problem. Um, so yeah, uh, there is there are some workarounds. Here what's important is that the, the pin is stable and they will work with the physics engine. So if we start play mode, we see that it's, yeah, okay, it's more or less stable. Okay, cool. Alright, that's the end of this video. I hope you liked it. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and go back to the Unity tutorial. Thanks for watching, keep coding and see you next time.